Carlo the Knasgaard is an unlikely literary celebrity. The Norwegian novelist is the author of the best-selling six-volume novelized memoir, My Struggle, Min Kamp in Norwegian, a title deliberately and somewhat controversially borrowed from Adolf Hitler's autobiography, Mein Kampf. As Knasgaard readily acknowledges, their books without much of a plot, or quotidian events are described with exacting and sometimes exhausting detail. In Norway, a country of just five million people, My Struggle has sold 450,000 copies. English language critics regularly compare him to Proust and await the translation of each new volume with childlike anticipation. We met Karlova in New York, days before the release of My Struggle, book four. Really? How's it going? <laughs> so what is your writing schedule? I mean, you get up fairly early and try to produce a certain amount of words a day, yeah. or? Yeah, I get up at four, four thirty, and I write before the kids. Uh, four thirty. Yeah. That's the best part of the day. So I have two, three hours before they wake up, and then I have to take them to school and, yeah. and so on. And then I write a little bit later, but the major part is, is, is in the morning. It's done in the morning. Yeah. How do like Norwegians think of you at this kind of global celebrity that's kind of happened to you? It's, it has been so much about me in Norwegian papers and Norwegian media that, that I think uh, people are you know, sick and tired of it. They don't want, they want, to, don't want to hear anything more. That's, I'm sorry. Um, doesn't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't sell that many books. You can't just be giving money out to people. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have any on me, so I would have given otherwise. No, but I think that's, that's how it is. I, I don't think it has anything to do with Jantelov. It's just that it's, it's too much. It's too much. When I cut my hair, when it was uh, at the worst, when I cut my hair, it was one page in, in the papers. Really? Uh, and when I bought my house, there were journalists taking pictures of the house before we moved in. They were in interviewing the neighbors, you know. This was half a year, a year when it was like that. Now it's, yeah. it's not anymore. But it's... So that's, but that's died down a little bit. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's become more global now, though, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I mean, if, you don't have social anxiety, though, do you? No, I don't, but it's just, you know, I'm not very good at speaking with people, uh, and I think my body language signalizes that I don't. I'm not interested, even though I am. But isn't that just a Scandinavian thing? Uh, yes, it is. But yeah. I think I have I have more of it. Yeah. Uh, so, no. So I, what I do is that I like to be in a room by myself. I try not to think about people that people know anything about me. And I succeed in that. This is a word for it in English, kind of a sub repression or something. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's what I do, yeah. and it's a way of staying but sane. I, I have to say, that's a really strange thing to hear, and I think a strange people, I mean, people would think that was odd. Somebody who's written 3,000 plus pages about themselves, exposing themselves, yeah, but in that's, this idea that you don't want people to know about you. Yeah, but that's in a novel, you know? Yeah, and yeah. when you write a novel, there's nobody there, and it's, it's yeah. like, yeah. The only possible way for me to express myself is through a novel, I think, where I could be free. And yeah. I can't be that in any social setting. I, I'm not free. Okay, so why wouldn't you do this? Why wouldn't you write the books where you feel, write these manuscripts where you feel that this is the only place you can really be free? And why just, why publish them? That's because I am a novelist, you know? That, yeah. That's what novelists do. Yeah. And uh, it is really, for me, a piece of, Art, in a way, it is literature. It is, yeah. you know, it is. Uh, it's not me. It's not yeah. my life. It is something objective to it. Yeah, very much so. In indeed, it's. <laughs> that's why I'm doing it. I try to make novels. Yeah, that's. Uh, go get a drink. Yeah. It's Can we do that in the middle of the day? That's okay. One drink is okay. One drink is okay. One drink is okay. I don't like writing. I like having written. Mm, I see. Do you, do you actually enjoy the process of writing? I mean, is it a painful, kind of like giving birth thing? It's painful in the beginning, very much so. Mm. With a white shit, that's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Staring back at you. Yeah, and you have this idea of what you're going to achieve, and it's yeah. going to be great. You know, I've been yeah. thinking for this for a year, and yeah. then you start and you say, no, this is crap, you know? And you know it, and it keeps staying as, as, as crap for maybe months, you know? Yeah. And that's hard. But then I, I start to enjoy it. You what know, is the point where you started enjoying it? At the point where I start to lose track of myself and, yeah. and, and, and what I'm doing and yeah. just disappearing into something. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thanks. And that's the only joy of writing, that's to disappear for mm -hmm. yourself. I find it hard too. I mean, I, I find that I write badly and I, I do that all the time and, and I need someone to say, no, this is good, constantly. So it's I have to have some people to say that to me, around me, which is the only way I can, can actually have the stamina to write. Is if someone's sort of looking at your stuff and yeah. giving an affirmation that yeah. this is yeah, good. Yeah, I need that. What I do, I write very much about nothing and it's very hard to, to see the value of that for myself, you know. So for instance, when I wrote for the New York Times, which mm, terrified me, I was so afraid. And I started to write and it was about nothing and it was really nothing and I, I couldn't. I needed to have someone to say, but this is good. And so I could write for another day and then I need that confirmation yeah. again. And you wrote, they wanted what, like a sort of 10 pages of written text and you ended up writing what? How I much? wrote 70 and I didn't dare to tell them. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't have the guts to tell them that I'm, this is going to be a bit longer. So on the day of the deadline, I get my agent to say, well, he has written 70 pages. See, this is the wonderful thing about success, is you have all these people that can, that can intervene in these uncomfortable situations and do it for you. This is the first time I've used it. <laughs> you know, it's the first time I've done that. Uh, and it, it, was, it was good. And that, so that comes out, tell me what this is like. This comes out, huge newspaper. The reaction is, for people who read the, just they're Sunday newspaper readers. Yeah. They're not necessarily familiar with your work. And they say, What's going on here? Yeah. Something's got to happen, right? Yeah. This is about nothing. Yeah. And the reaction is, is mixed, but you don't pay attention to those reactions. I saw uh, the, you know, the number of comments to it, but for me it was completely you know, uncontroversial. I was just writing, I saw nothing and I was writing about that. And I, I was very bothered when I traveled through the US because I know this, I don't have a story. There is yeah. nothing, I don't see anything, it's, you know. Yeah. And then I have to write that. And that's the story. Yeah, and I still feel bad about it, but that's what it was. You, you know? do? Yeah. Well, but the Times was happy with it. The people that read it were broadly happy with it, yeah, as far but as it you is. know. Yeah, but, but so this weighs on you in some way, that you could have done this in a different, could have been better, it could have, could, something could have happened yeah, to you. Yeah, I could have talked to someone, mm -hmm. you know, or... or, or, or presented something, or yeah. had a theory about something, or, yeah. or because they wanted something big, I guess. But isn't That's that they it. know what they're, I mean, if you say to anybody who's read your work or knows something about you, what does he do? You say, well, he writes these books about himself that are also something, they're also about nothing, too. There could be meandering yeah. kind of bits about going and getting something out of the refrigerator. So there's an expectation, this is what you do, right? That's yeah. how yeah. you write. Yeah. But that still makes you feel sort yeah, of miserable. It's, yeah, it's like this. I, uh, as everybody wants, I want to be clever and I want to, you know, to be admired for my yeah. for being yeah. clever in a way. Yeah. And in writing, you do that. But it's hard to wrap your head around because you say, you know, you want to be clever, you want to be brilliant. You, one of your heroes is Proust. You're consistently compared to Proust by people who are worth listening to, and that has no. I mean... I know Proust, I've read Proust, I know yeah. what he can do, and I can't do that. I mean, that's... that's a, <laughs> so it doesn't matter who says it, you just will no, not believe I, it. No, I saw, yeah. saw the, you know, the headline, the Norwegian Proust, and that's a, yeah. you know, a contradiction in different <laughs> terms. It's impossible, it, yeah. it really is impossible. And I really admire Proust writing, yeah. if I could, you know. And I had a kind of a sorrow when I ended my struggle because this was my chance to do something like yeah. that. This was the story of my life, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, in fact, it, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't that, didn't do that, but, but I could But what about, I mean, you, you understand how that makes me feel. If that is a failure, it's like, I think of it, like, Jesus Christ, I'm, you know, I'll never achieve anything even close to that. There's nothing that I can imagine would be as successful as that for me. No, and but it, that it, success is, you know, that's something out there that has nothing to do with You separate that writing. from, yeah, yeah, yeah from very much so, yeah. Yeah, and, and from happiness too, right? Yeah. But it has an influence, doesn't it? I mean, being successful makes you yeah. slightly happier. It has so man, many advantages, you know. Yeah. And so many doors that are yeah. open, which is brilliant. Yeah. But it doesn't help anything with my mental, you know, state of mind. How happy are you? I woke up every morning being unhappy. Every morning? Every morning. Consistently? Yeah, with this feeling of... When was the last time you woke up and you said, I'm sort of reasonably happy? Doesn't happen. And then it takes some hours and, and I 
and it gets better, you know. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's okay. That's mm -hmm. how it is. And I, you know, I... But you just accept this. This is just part of... Yeah. That's and is, is writing sort of... It's helping. It's helping. Yeah, it's, it's a cliche, helping. but is it, it's therapeutic in some ways. Yeah, okay. not what I write, but just the act of writing. That's, no. that's That helps, uh, because I forget myself, yeah. you know. But with success comes, you know, these other anxieties. You go to San Francisco last week to talk about volume four of My Struggle. How many people showed up to talk to you? <laughs> or listen to you a, talk? <laughs> just 1,200. 1,200 people. Yeah. What's that moment like when you, I have to be there to amuse and entertain 1,200 people? It's a moment of horror. Uh, it's, I get so nervous, I almost throw up, you know? And it's, 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 it's terrifying. And it is terrifying talking to 20 people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's absolutely, it's terrible. You're a very, very successful writer. And it seems like a sort of perfect storm of this does not fit your personality at yeah. all. But I still have some elements in my personality. I mean, I have a kind of a narcissistic uh, part of me, and that's part of it. I want to be seen as well, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's very contradictory. Mm -hmm. It's full of ambivalence. I mean, is it difficult for you when the, 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 the books come out in Norway? The response to this is very positive, and this is kind of soil you've tilled quite a bit, but it's also one of anger yeah. from people that are yeah. clearly identified. I don't know, wanted to sue you or something. I mean, there's people getting lawyers, there's people denouncing you in the press. Yeah. Is that, that's, that's a sort of different type of anxiety. I mean, writing this book is a clarifying experience for you. It's, it's therapeutic in so many ways. And then it comes out, and then that. I mean, how did you respond to that? Yeah, I didn't you know, think about that when I was writing the first two books. But then I sent a copy out to the people I've been yeah. writing about. And then I got a reaction. And they said, you can't publish it. We will stop you. We will use all means to stop you from publishing Legal, legal means? Yeah, they said so. And, and then we just had lawyers reading everything. And it was kind of a... And then I realized what I've been doing. And, and the rage and anger against me was... You know, I wanted to be liked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. kind of a basic thing. <laughs> but I could have said, OK, I won't publish. Yeah. But I did. So it was a, maybe a two weeks time where I was discussing this, thinking through this. Ethically, yeah. morally, can I do it? You know, what I've been doing was I wrote about my father and my grandmother. Your father died in 1998, though, right? Yeah. 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 And so this was a this was his family. Yeah. His side yeah. Of family. yeah that's they right. were yeah. they were the most yeah. upset. Yeah, they were very upset. But what I said to myself was they can't deny me telling the story of my father. That's yeah. they can't do that. Yeah. yeah. But of course it's it's um, I inflict pain on people, and I, that's, um... How many ruptured relationships from this book? That's, this is the half of my family. So it's, it is half of your family? Yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah. and it's some... Friends? Some friends, yeah. yeah. But not many friends. Um, almost everybody accepted it, and, yeah. and some were angry for a few days, but that yeah. was okay. Let's talk about the books a little bit. I mean, there's endless discussion of the actual title of the book. And every piece seems to start with the same kind of paragraph. There was one in Interview Magazine the other day. You know, my struggle is a struggle to read because it's, there's a lot of tedium in it, and then a, ref, and then a discussion of the actual, the actual title itself. If you skip ahead to the sixth book, you have like a 200-page digression, and it's talking about Mein Kampf, and talking about Adolf Hitler, and August Kubizek, his childhood friend, and all this stuff. What was the why, I guess, is the very short question. Of the, yeah. you know, it's, a book, it's a book about yourself, it's about you. I start off, I'm reading about your father, and then yeah. I'm ending on 200 pages on Adolf Hitler. Yeah. It's, uh, the first five books forms a circle. It starts and ends with the funeral yeah. of my father. Book six is about the consequences of those five books. Yeah. And one of the consequences was that I used the title Mein Kampf, yeah. My Struggle. So I had, to, I had to read Hitler's book, and I did and you read And you actually read the entire thing? Yeah. yeah. And this book is also about the relationship between reality and literature. And Adolf Hitler's book is maybe the book that's kind of crossed mm. those lines most. Yeah. 
And led by that, I started to write about it. And I thought I should write 10 pages, but yeah. it kind of, you know, I was so interested in it, so I start, started yeah. writing about Hitler as a young man, and I realized, yeah. well, there's a lot of similarities between Hitler as a young man and me as a young man. And yeah, I that's just... the most jarring thing. You don't read stuff like that about this sort of humanizing in some way, and people comparing themselves to Adolf Hitler. Yeah. I mean, was the reaction to that not to that, I think, um, but it was in reaction to, you know, after the massacre in Norway, there was all these people were gathered, there were 100,000 of people were gathered for the first time for many, many years in Oslo, you know, and I compared that to, I've, there was, it was so good to be a part of a nation, it was so good to be a part of that, it felt like a we, you know, and I compared that to Nazism, because I knew there must be something very good in there, you know because people wouldn't have gone there if it was only bad, you know? So it must have been joy, it must have been something very good. And I compare that to those two, you know, episodes with each, each other, and that was a headline. You, you, you are a, an incredibly intelligent man. You know exactly what's happening when you write that. You know that that's going to drive people crazy, right? No, I didn't think of that. It's not... You it's honestly like, didn't think that this I was thought this, to is, this is true, and yeah. finally I found kind of some truth in there. Of course, somewhere in me I knew this is, this is a kind of provocation, but that wasn't... That wasn't the motivation for writing. This was no, actually... This is, yeah. this is what I... Do you I stop thought. yourself from writing things if you think that it might... I mean, as, as somebody who's very conscious of what people are thinking of them, does everything that comes out from here come onto the page without you stopping yourself? No, it, it has to be true. I have to, you yeah. know, have to know this is true. Yeah. Then I could do it, no matter consequences. But it has to be... Can't be, you know, I'm saying this to gain something. It yeah. must, must be true. Because when you open the book, and I see you talking about Ian Kershaw, and then I go back five pages, and I see two words on the page that screaming out at me, kook or fitta. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And I see these, and, like, and then somewhere down, I see Hitler. Yeah. What is the context of that? The what, context? Yeah, the context of, like, you're talking about, I mean, this is about words that one cannot say, yeah. things that one cannot say. Is that what the... I don't really remember. You don't remember? I don't, I don't remember it, no. You honestly don't? No, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> really? Yeah, but it's so many pages, you know? It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> They're yours, right? Yeah, but it's, it's, I'm sorry. That, that's surprising to me. But it is like if you, if you try not to reflect when you're writing, it's, yeah. it's almost like you are dreaming when you're writing, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not so strange. And it was the last one you wrote, and it's the more sort of academic part of it. Yeah. Was that enjoyable in... in yeah, the... that was the only really enjoyable part was... It was? Yeah, that was really a joy to write about Adolf Hitler. Why? Because it's... Um, it's... Because uh, it's not about you? It's not about me, and it's something completely new to me and isn't like an exploration into a new territory and I'm very interested in what was going on there, you know, and I, yeah. and I think I found out something. There's kind of a cultural psychology involved here, which I never thought of, the, the time psychology. Mm -hmm. And then the experience of the First World War, which must have been absolutely terrible for them and, and destroy their, their sense of value of life, you know, and then he rises up, you know, and he can express those feelings for everybody. That was what he was doing. I just tried to figure out why, how, you know, and I think I could understand it quite good. You know, it is never-ending discussion, I see, of your politics. Does this surprise you, that, or do you not care at all? Uh, I'm not interested in in that aspect, no, I'm not. The irony from the very beginning calling this book my struggle was that this struggle is that, you know, little, yeah. little, small struggles that we all, all have and all know. But, but, but to be clear, you read Mein Kampf after you named the book. Yeah, you know, yeah, I had to, you know, because of that. So, yeah. I, so, so I did read it. So um, that's kind of the only political statement I'm making. This is, this is, and that's, yeah. I think that's the role of art. That's yeah. what art has to do. It is anti-politics in its, you know, yeah. in its core. Uh, but no, I'm not right-wing. What is the thing that drives people to say that about you? The two, two topics you can't really talk about if you don't say the exact right things. And that's immigration and that's gender. And I'm touching both in the books. Yeah. So um, uh, that's the reason why. The fourth volume's out now in the US. 
this is about your teenage years, mostly, Yes, right? that's right, yeah. yeah. The age of 16 to 19, something. The basic topic in the book, I, I think, is identity. Yeah. It is. And childhood is kind of an area where you don't have any identity, you just exist, you know? And then you, then you kind of come to terms with who you are, who your parents are, mm -hmm. the teenage years, which is very interesting. For the first time, you want to have sex, mm -hmm. you can't. You don't really know what it is. And, and there's a lot of you in this, but trying to find that. Like, yeah, where, is, where do I is. get sex, basically? Yeah, and right? how, and, and what is <laughs> how, this, what you is know? It, yeah. yeah, and it's such a drive in the life. It's yeah. such an important thing. It's, yeah. You're completely occupied with it, and yeah. it's so difficult. So I'm fascinated by that period in my life. So it was very easy to write about. I, I remembered everything instantly how it was. Even if the memories are, yeah. you know, faked or, or not It doesn't true, matter, right? It's, it's what's inside. There's a film script. The, yeah. The, tell us about that. There's the, your first novel's being adapted. What's going on with that? Who's, who's doing that? What's I have, your, a, what's have a, friend, your a friend who is a director called Frederik Edfeldt. Uh, so he's going to direct it, and I'm writing the script. They're just waiting for the script. They've been waiting for a year, uh, and I haven't. Are you having trouble producing it? I find it very hard to write. Uh, I, this is the opposite of writing a novel to write a script, but I'm getting better at it, but it still is lacking something. It is a different language, you know, yeah. and, and I don't master that language. Yeah. I mean, the first draft I sent to the director, Frederick, he just laughed at me. He just laughed. I mean. <laughs> what is this? I mean, all the characters are kind of presenting themselves. Hello, my name is, you know, and I'm this and that, you know. Like, and then he explained to me, okay, you, this is not how you do it. You yeah. just jump in there and everybody will understand everything yeah. just by... And yeah. then, okay, and then I try that. And yeah. It's getting better, but it still is. It's very difficult, very hard. I mean, you can't explain anything, you know. In, in writing, you just explain it. Yeah. This is how it was, and yeah. that's the writing. You can't do that. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's exciting, but it's very hard. What have you moved on to? What are you working on mostly now? I have... Um, I'm writing one text each day through a year about... I mean, I get up in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, and I pick just one word, one object, and I write one page about that. So it's no psychology, it's no, no people, yeah. it's just things. Tell me the last one you wrote, what, what it was. Uh, should have been, you know, toilet chair. Uh, the toilet itself. Yeah, how we, how it looks, what it does, how it works, like you've never seen it before, you know, or vomit, or tree, or sun, and I try to make all the things. I mean, we have a hierarchy of things, you know. Yeah. Something is good, something is bad. But I try to, you know, crush that and have equality, so everything is of the same value. So it's just just for fun, <laughs> almost. And I, and I need to escape from. The psychology of, but in the more in the sense of a more traditional novel, which you've obviously done too. That's what I'm going to do now. That's, that's, that's yeah. That's that's, that's, that's what that's, I'm. This is just some I think that I do in the morning, and then I will write a novel during the day. That's the, that's the plan. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah, and it's going to be something not realistic, not has nothing to do with me whatsoever. It's going to be very different. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was really nice to talk to you. To talk to you.